this will be an interesting episode. I mean, any episode mentioning Bangladesh will always make for an interesting episode in the Northeast, right? But I hope you watch the episode till the end before you start abusing us. You see, the rest of the country woke up to all that was happening in Bangladesh only a few months ago. But as always, every political earthquake that Delhi feels, we feel them first. Allow me to explain in this episode of Decoded because believe me when I say this, the impact of everything happening in Bangladesh will hurt the Northeast a lot more and a lot worse than the rest of the nation. Apologies for the title, but it was too hard to say no. Now back to the topic. When the government fell in Bangladesh, Delhi and the mainstream media after a long, long time realized that there was a nation called Bangladesh, a neighbor where things were going wrong. It was hard not to think of countries like Libya and Egypt when we saw scenes of common people walking into Sheikh Hasina's home and carrying away anything and everything from sofas to statues to of course fish. Fish, I mean, as a Bengali, I was slightly proud of the person who entered a former leader's house and his first thought was, But anyway, this episode is not about what caused the toppling of a 15-year-old government that, no matter who you speak with, was the epitome of nepotism and showed a polite middle finger to things like human rights. We are far more concerned about what the impact would be on the Northeast because, truth be told, even when things were peaceful, we were suffering anyway. And by we, I mean the Northeast. And by the way, we are not seeing us separate from India. We are simply pointing out that for the Northeast, even a peaceful Bangladesh posed problems that few, if any, had answers to. What do I mean? Here. Two years ago, our editor-in-chief Karma Paljor had written about how the Indian government must speak with the Bangladesh government at the earliest. Why? Because the Bangladesh army's actions against the Kuki insurgents had left thousands of minorities in limbo. And what do people do who have death hanging on their heads? They run. And Chin Kukis, as expected, ran towards brothers in Mizoram, a state that had already seen a deluge of refugees from Myanmar. Now, sure. The number of refugees was not nearly as high as that from Myanmar, but it was quite clear that even in 2022, things were far from ideal and the Northeast was feeling the impact of a non-peaceful Bangladesh. Northeast residents may not agree unanimously with each other on several topics, but if there is one topic that finds absolute common ground, it is that there are too many illegal immigrants in the Northeast and most are from Bangladesh. So when the Supreme Court mandated NRC began during doing what it was supposed to do, the hope was that once India has identified illegal citizens, they will be deported to the country they belong to. And in this case, it meant Bangladesh. Now, here is the thing. The BJP, which let us be honest, does an amazing job in convincing its supporters that it is the last crowd against illegal immigrants did not even once talk with Bangladesh at a diplomatic level to discuss deportations in large numbers. Sure, every time someone is caught crossing the border, they are deported, but that number is a trickle compared to what has happened in the past few decades. The NRC, which was offered as a solution, now raises more suspicion than someone carrying a dead body in the middle of the night in the back of the car. The state government does not trust it the NRC appointed officer Pratek Hajela is now facing corruption charges and as always, we do not hear a peep about NRC anymore. And this was before the India-favoring Sheikh Hasina was kicked out of the country. So can anyone tell us now how exactly will we carry out deportations or is the plan to lock crores of people in detention centers? Is there anything that does not threaten the Northeast? I mean, in the past few years, look at our condition. Floods? Yes. Cyclone? Yes. Landslides? Yes. Internet conflict? Hello, Manipur. More floods? Yes. A joke of a public health system? 
yes shocking condition of schools yes and there is the volatile situation in neighboring nations like myanmar and bangladesh now there may be a disagreement over the exact role of myanmar in manipur violence but the truth is the coup the instability and the never ending violence inside myanmar has also spread to the northeast especially manipur as expected the fall of the hasina government meant a spate of violence across the country and as is most common the victims were minorities both religious and ethnic the mainland was understandably interested in attacks against hindus and exclusively focused on it at the beginning of the violence however the violence in bangladesh has hurt all religious ethnic and even political minorities protests in mizoram tripura and other parts of the northeast are proof that communities like the chakmas residing in india want the indian government to urgently speak to the, their brothers and sisters living in bangladesh here is what pradyut dev verma said on the matter chakmas mocks we have garos we have manipuris there are many people who are minorities in bangladesh that today we are seeing our temples being burned our churches being destroyed uh prayer centers our buddhist monks being attacked homes being destroyed women being forced to wear hijabs i think this is very wrong and every time there is unrest in bangladesh our people are targeted i think this is very sad and bangladesh should be exposed at the united nations internationally as well that they cannot protect the minorities in their own country and what is happening today what we are organizing here today is to also tell the government of india that there is we are duty bound to protect as a democracy we are a secular democracy and we should protect all communities who are within india and outside india when we can talk about israel we can talk about palestine why can't we talk about the indigenous people of tripura works chakmas hindu bengalis who are being systematically targeted who are faith being attacked christians buddhists hindus regularly in that country the caretaker government in bangladesh needs to be told in no uncertain terms that india will not allow the torture murder and death of innocent ethnic minorities India must provide safe refuge to people whose lives are under threat and this can only be done if we speak with the local government and administration so that there is no anger among locals the report that a pro pakistan islamist government will take over in bangladesh is a scary idea for india and the northeast this region is now surrounded by what we perceive as hostile nations even though on paper we continue to maintain a friendly relationship with both countries i mean India has invested billions of dollars in Myanmar while Bangladesh is an important trade partner and every time both Myanmar and Bangladesh bleed the pain will be felt by the northeast the last thing a region perennially scared of illegal immigration is more influx of refugees and for that not to happen the central government must be far from proactive than it is right now sadly as manipur and the outing incident have shown the center does not care for the northeast unless it can exploit us for political gains don't forget to like share and subscribe to east mojo for any queries put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications